It's getting worse. Hey, groups, welcome. Um, hey, Kyle, I don't know if you noticed, but you have a little something on your cheek. It's just hard to talk with that if you could kind of clean your face up. I was just using it for this because I'm like, ah. <laughs> Kyle started cleaning his face. I'm like, how do you not get the joke I'm doing right now? Actually, these are just Band-Aids for fun. I won't peel this one off. Otherwise, you'd be like, oh, my gosh, what's going on? But I'm fine. Oh, that was awesome. Oh, man. I had sticky stuff in my eyelashes. That's baki. All right, so the first in a series, a short series, uh, really dealing with the apostles' teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and the prayer, the early rhythms of the the, the rhythms of the early church, and um, just the centrality of the word. We're talking about the word of God. The apostles' teaching was based on, rooted out of, and declaring continually the word of God to the world around them. So what we we know and understand in this is excuse me, that we, the church, live in that same rhythm of declaring the Word of God to the world around us. The, the only way to do that is to be in the Word of God for ourselves. In the Word of God, reading it, studying it, growing in it, and digging in. So I hope that's what you do in your group's time and in your personal devotions. I'm excited to get going with group's questions. All right, so here's the real postscript. One thing I, I didn't mention in the recap, sorry, was um, the Holy Spirit compels us into courageous obedience to be people who declare the Word of God out of our lives. We speak it, we live it, but the only way to do that is to be in the Word of God. The first obedience we have to the Spirit is into the Word of God, studying it, knowing what God is saying and what he is declaring to the world, and how he intends to communicate it through us. So I invite you to a courageous obedience first into the word of God. Get into the apostles' teaching, the word of God. That was the basis of everything, and it needs to be the basis of everything you do. Your first courageous step is knowing we believe in the priesthood of all believers. You can read scripture and feed yourself. It's okay. It's not only okay, it's right for you to be in this word on your own. All right, kids, did you know that uh, Kyle has never been on an airplane? Isn't that crazy? He's like 70 and he's never flown. Kyle's like, dude, I'm 22. Are you 22, Kyle? Yeah. All right. So discussion question one is done. How old is Kyle and how many times has he flown? 22 and zero. But this week... Kyle gets to fly. So we're pretty excited. I'll send you a video of him weeping at takeoff because I think he's a little nervous. I'm going to make Tom kind of console him because otherwise it'd be weird. I don't want to do it. I don't need Kyle crying on me. No? Apparently Kyle's allowed to cry on me. Great. It's going to be an awkward flight. Question number one. What are the, word, what are the three words you would use to describe Peter and the other apostles as we read in um, Acts 5, 17 to 42, what three words would you use to describe the apostles? Question two, at our church we value something called courageous obedience. What is courage? Have you ever done something you didn't think you could do? I super remember this as a child, like doing something and be like, like my first backflip, I was like, oh, you know, I was so happy because I did it. I didn't think I could. Have you ever done that? Have you ever done something and you previously thought there's no way I could do it? All right, kids, have a great summer. This is our last group con content until uh, next fall. So long, farewell, of eaters ain't adieu to you and you and you and you and you. Goodbye. Oh, that was horrible. Goodbye. Yeah, it was better. I got up to my high note. I'd get in my falsetto. Kids, have a great summer. I'm sorry this is the last thing you'll see of me till next fall. And don't forget... You should probably say a prayer for Mr. Kyle. He's going to be a little nervous on Monday. He has to take a plane ride. I think he'll be a big boy about it. He better be. He's six foot three. <laughs> Have a great summer, kids.
Question number one. When have you ever been able to do more than you previously thought possible? When have you done what you know you should have done even when others were against you or told you to stop? The early church was devoted to the apostles' teaching. What is or what was the apostles' teaching? The Sanhedrin knew everything the apostles knew from the Old Testament. They had also seen and heard Jesus. Why do you think they didn't understand? Question five. Read the following passage and then make a note of what stands out to you. What what stood out to you in that passage? Well, believe it or not, and no matter what the weather says, summer is getting close. We're, we're getting close to it. It's May, um, and, and you know, once again in Michigan, the earth is in bloom, right? And we know that uh, when summer comes, we just have some transitions that we make. And here's a few of them. First of all, at the end of the school year, which I believe, I think for Zealand uh, schools, we're going to use that as kind of our model simply because we're a church in Zealand. Zealand school's last day is June 11th. So the kids will be moving up in their grades. As soon as they graduate in school, they're moving up a grade this summer in the Foundry Church. Um, We also have um, some transitions in our devotions. There's three devotions a week, and then there's also um, two readings, two scripture readings. Remember, get in the word. So that transition in our format um, is transitioning. So it's going to look a little different, and it's awesome how we're, you know, we're just just working to transition that over. And then we know that this is your last week of official groups content until next fall. So what I would love to do is I would like for you to attend well to the transition, especially as a group. I would like to invite you to get together a few times this summer. You know, kill the fatted calf, cook some meat, and hang out together. Have a good time. Yard games, go to the beach. If you got a boat, go boating. Go have fun and be a group together. You get to do life together, and I would invite you to really make the most of this season of summer where you get to have some transitions out of the schedule and the rigor of everything with our kids in school and different things. Just to be able to, well, maybe relax a little, enjoy being in your group and get to know each other, not just getting through content, but getting into each other's lives. So I really hope you have a great summer. Um, Hopefully when you see me next time, I'll be wearing less than 17 bandages on my face. (laughs) And also, Kyle, who's flying on Monday? Yes, do it. I thought you were going to get in front of the camera. What are you doing? No. No. Kyle's flying on Monday for the first time. So if you hear of a passenger crying and screaming on an airplane, it's just Kyle. He's six foot three. Just under six three, actually. He's six two. <laughs> oh, that's all. You better stop. I can see the lens opening. I'm gonna come kick you in your neck. Have a great Kyle's gonna have a transition <laughs> from a neck that works to a neck that's been kicked. Have a great summer. This is the worst groups video ever. I implore you, keep all of this in there. Kyle, I hope you fly safely on Monday because I'm flying with you. So purely my desire for your safety is selfish. I'm not real happy with Erica right now because when I went to the doctor the other day uh, for my physical and my face changing, I found out I shrunk a little. I'm not as tall as I used to be, and she just mocked me. Is there anything you want to say about that to the groups so that they know why I'm insecure? It's true.